Welcome back to the next segment of our panel with the industry leaders on communicating strategically through challenging times. In this segment, we're going to drill deeper into how virtual means of communication make strategic communication more challenging and how great leaders have overcome these challenges. The next question really has to do with the, you know, the ways in which we've had to communicate as a result of COVID. I mean, I would was teaching live at the end of um, the winter. We have winter and spring term here. The end of the winter in um, you know 2020, and then suddenly was online. And fortunately, I've had 10 years experience teaching online for our healthcare management program. But the ways in which we communicated, you know, to a group of people was especially challenging, as leaders, all of us had to learn about Zoom or Teams or um, fill in the blank. Um, including this format that we're using today uh, to connect with employees and others. Uh, can you share some of the insights on, on virtual means of communication that you guys have gleaned um, that make strategic communication more challenging? And I think this is probably a good question to start with a uh, CTO on. Uh, Ron, I'll start with you. Just to think about like, you, you guys have been in a hot seat and still are as a result of all of these changes. And it's remarkable how well our IT team here did to get everybody up to speed. I'm so proud of the work they did. And they certainly made my life a whole lot easier. But talk a little bit about some of those virtual challenges. That yeah, had. sure. I have uh, I have two perspectives on that. One, just from a technologist standpoint, as you alluded to, all organizations, businesses, educational organizations, or otherwise, were suddenly hit with a sudden wave and onslaught of you know, an increase in volume of remote work. And, and I think that everybody uh, had remote, some sort of remote work capabilities or most large companies did anyway. And um, I think for the most part, from what I've heard and seen at the companies I've worked with during COVID, even before my current, uh, my current employer, that I think the technology had evolved uh, to the point where, you know, most companies were able to pretty quickly and maybe pleasantly, surprisingly, um, accommodate those volumes of remote workers pretty well. I know there was probably some some hiccups at the beginning, but um, but it was it was it's tough for me to think of a, a larger organization saying you know oh we just couldn't handle the remote work. I mean they were able to get over it through all the hard work of the people, the resilience of the people, the creativity of the employees, as well as the the fact that the technology has evolved. I think so. Um, it was definitely a challenge, but I think most companies have gotten through it. I think on the on the more personal side, as I alluded to before, um, I interviewed and started with this job completely during the pandemic which means I joined uh, the company, uh, assumed leadership of a global team at a, a large organization such as Merck uh, completely remotely. And, um, and then have only started meeting people in person you know, over the past four to eight weeks. And uh, what I have found is the remote communication is wonderful for maintaining communication and um, kind of keep keeping communications going. Uh, it is um, not a replacement for meeting people for the first time in person and building relationships that way. So in other words, I met people over a year uh, solely remotely. And then when I was finally able to interact with them, when, with them in person, almost 100% of the time we both said, oh my gosh, it's so much better to meet in person. <laughs> you know, we, because, and, and I think it'd be different if I knew them before and then had to get remote. Uh, but uh, for somebody who have you not, that I haven't met uh, at all, um, it was a stark, a really noticeable contrast of the quality of the interaction and meeting in person uh, rather than remote. So, so, uh, so that's two perspectives, both a kind of technology perspective as well as a kind of personal perspective in terms of how the remote communications affects uh, kind of meeting people and building relationships. Awesome. And Asad, given the work management business that Asana does, this must be a very relevant question for you to answer. So could you take it on next? Yeah, sure. Thanks for that. I mean, I mean, I'll be a little bit real, real over here, right? I mean, I think the video conferencing fatigue is uh, is a challenge to all of us, right? And it has actually the challenge has grown and grown and feels very exhausting, right? So, the key here for leaders, I think, is not to get everybody on a call for every type of communication, but rather we can use it as strategically to truly connect with people, as Ron was mentioning just now, right? I mean, how do we? actually build that connection with our with our direct reports, with our teams, which are organizations. I think that would be like, really, if somebody can successfully do that, I think that would be like really game changing for their teams and re-engagement. In fact, Asana has uh, a 2021 anatomy of work index, the research done, 
The boom in video calls is costing individuals an additional 157 hours per week per year. So that's almost a month in productivity if you think about it. So as the workday extends with less time for deep focused work, three in four employees are willing to work, right? Because the work and life are, 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 are so integrated now, right? So the experience actually the burnout, I mean, seven and seven in 10 employees, at least once in 2020, they have experienced all of this. So I think the critical thing over here is the owner onus should be on the leadership and people managers to model good behaviors and set an example for their teams to follow and then create the norms around how we spend our work time, right? I mean, an example, like a few examples like we have done uh, and we are ex explicitly actually taking on at Sana is as leaders, we strive to stick to a no meeting Wednesday schedule. So employees feel empowered to do the same and can get their, uh, get into their creative uh, flow of work, right? And we also ask managers to block their times away, right? Heads down to do some focus work and their teams are also empowered to doing the same thing, right? So I think things like these are really encouraging good behaviors across the organization to do some more deeper focus work. And I, th I think that's helping us a lot. That's awesome. Jill. Uh, yeah, first I'll comment on uh, Assad's comment. I, I Yesterday, for the first time, I um, took Oh, for the first time since I joined HCL, I said, I don't want to do our call on Teams. I want to go walk because I haven't left my chair in six hours. So I took a walking call for an hour. And I don't know why I didn't think of doing it before. I think just because I'm so new, it's been good to interact on video. But it's impacting my waistline and I don't like it. So I've got to get my steps in and I've got to figure out alternative ways to, to work other than sitting in front of a computer for every single interaction on video. So um, so that's just a personal um, anecdote, but we, uh, HCL puts out a magazine called Straight Talk and we interviewed the CIO of Zoom um, uh, uh, about nine months ago. And I love this quote from him. He says, on video, there is no hierarchy everybody's head is the same size. So that is kind of one of the pros, I think, when we started to go into, when we were out absolutely in the lockdown and you know nobody could interact, it kind of leveled the playing field to some degree because at my former organization, we always had people who were working flexibly or remotely and they never got to interact when there were in-person meetings. So all of a sudden it kind of brought everybody together at the outset but here's the biggest challenge we have right now. It's very uncertain how things are gonna work in, with, with mixed audiences, some that are still interacting over Teams and some that have come back into the office. I've had a few situations where we've had four people um, dial in remotely on, on video and then four people in a room. It was not good, it was not good. And I think this is gonna, this is the next wave of the transformation as as a lot of companies are you know embracing hybrid now how are things going to work in the future where the the folks who really don't need to be back in the office or or whose companies tell them you're staying home and this group's coming back how are we going to make sure that those people who aren't going into the office regularly are not left out and you know are are, are ho hopefully not going to have a, a negative impact on their careers but I think the future is yet to be known. So these are some of the thoughts yeah. that have been running through my mind. That, that's a great point, Jill. I was at a, a strategy workout session this week with a company in San Francisco, and one of the participants in a six-person meeting was on video for six hours. And I found that not to be disruptive at all. It actually like that person was in the room. But then we did a workout session with about 25 people, all of them, on Zoom and then put them in breakouts to do brainstorming around strategy. And to my mind, that did not work the same. You know what I mean? The, the energy that you get from people being together in a brainstorming session yeah. um, and the creativity, I think, is very hard to get from these media. And that's what I think has been lost over the last year. Um, anyone else want to weigh in on this one, on this question of, um, the way his work has changed from a communications perspective. 
Otherwise, yeah. I will move so, on. So, so, to... just, maybe just one comment. Yeah, Raman and uh, Bernard. Why don't we all of us mute and yeah. Bernard will start and we'll go to Raman. Sure. Um, and and I'm, I'm sure Raman sees the same. Um, you know, in the Asia Pacific region, um, most home environments are not conducive for working from home. Um, it's small apartment living um, and people, you know, always turn up to the office. And that's the culture ever since, you know, we can remember. Um, so when we had to move people to work from home, there's a couple of just physical challenges. Obviously, the, I think the communication and Ron hit on the spot. Most large companies, you know, had their VPNs and had all the or all, all, all the uh, requirement, technology requirement to make it happen. But it was actually the home environment that was challenging. When you have two or three kids that are maybe doing homeschool at the same time, it's not just a bandwidth issue, is you just don't have enough quiet space within a small apartment. So the first thing I did, I bought everybody, you know, the best noise canceling headphones I can find to at least try to create a little bit of space uh, uh, for them. But apart from that, the other thing we did was um, we ramped up um, a, a lot of support for mental health. Um, during this time, uh, what we saw working from home, it presented a whole new set of mental health challenges. Um, so what we did was, um, you know, we, 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 we got third parties and pro professionals and uh, that provided both mental health support, not only for employees, but for their family members as well, because we just saw a lot of things happening um, that was just very new for people and it caused a lot of friction within the family when kids are trying to do education at home and, um, you know, others are trying to work from home as well. So I just kind of, and there's a slightly different angle on, on, on the challenges of working from home. That's a great point. Bernard, uh, Bernard just said, yeah, I was just about to say, Bernard just said everything I wanted to say. I have nothing more to add. Yeah, it, it's really interesting how some people just couldn't get away from their families when they were at home. I, I was on, you know, a work call with a client who's, they constantly had a problem with two of their kids. And you could see like the challenge between the husband and wife, both working from home, playing out every single time we got on a call. And um, those kind of disruptions, I think, were magnified and, you know, multiplied across so many different industries in so many different ways.